They always say next year's class is always better. They got better running backs, more receivers, more this and more that. We started hearing about it this year with this year's class and next year's class. Well, let's look at it today. Let's do a one-round, way-too-early 2024 Rookie Mox Draft Super Flex Style. This one was sent to me. I did not participate in this draft, so it's not a rankings. It's nothing like that. But we're going to have some fun with the names that we could be drafting here in 2024. Let's get this started. Remember, this is super flex. So we're going to have a quarterback come off the board as the 101. Like we always usually do. Unless B. John Robinson is there. And this year, or 2024's quarterback, is Caleb Williams from USC. And this dude is a highlight reel. This dude has the Konami code. But he also has the arm to go with it. He has the highlight package to go with it. He has the production profile to go with it. He has performed with two different collegiate programs. He did well at Oklahoma when he stand in for Rattler. And then he came over at USC and just exploded. A lot of people call him the best quarterback in the country. By sure, he would be the 101 in the 2023 draft class. If he was in this draft class today, he would be the top quarterback selected. He'd be over Bryce Young. He'd be over Bryce Stroud. Better Konami code, better on the ground, better arm, bigger plays, money throws, a lot more to his resume compared to the other two quarterbacks, and we're still building from there. Quarterback two coming off the board in the rankings when he was coming out of high school behind Quinn Ewers and he has been nothing but good ever since he's seen the field even in his first start and when he first came out then place for Rattler he was playing well he took the bowl by the horns and ran with it that's the type of player you're looking at here going to the 102 and we might have a generational talent here at the wide receiver position typically you'd see the other quarterback going here but this guy is possibly if he has another big year going to be a generational type of prospect. You like a couple wide receivers like this every 10 years or so. We're talking about Marvin Harrison Jr. from Ohio State. He's got the Harrison Jr. background there from his dad playing from the Colts Hall of Famer, possibly another generational talent. Highlight reel for days. And I'm talking about when I say highlight reel, I mean if you're scrolling Twitter on a Saturday, you're not going to miss a catch from him. Because he balls out, posterizes DBs constantly with insane ball skills, body control. And we've covered him when he was a high school recruit, went over that film. We know how cerebral of a route runner he is. And he's only building from there. We had some clips of him running in the offseason from last year. Dude's got enough speed to get it done. He's six foot three. He's got the size. He's got the wingspan. This guy's got it all. He just got to keep building. Just got to keep doing it. And he's going to be at that level when he comes out for the draft. At 103, these guys selected their RB1. Their RB1 just went off the board. He's the RB1 in the Dynasty Fantasy Football Debbie League ranks over at DLF. And that's Raheem Sanders from Arkansas. This dude's big. Six foot two, 225 pounds. Productive. 1,400 yards last year. Caught 28 balls last year. Looked good as a freshman as well. This guy is on track to be the top running back in that class. And he has been nothing but productive at the SEC level. He's a banger back with some wiggle, which is something you want to see. Going to the 104 pick, and we got a quarterback coming off the board. I can see him going 102 when actual drafts happen due to that super flex value. And I can't say he's bad because he's damn good. And that's Drake May from North Carolina. Guy's got the size at six foot five. That's where he's listed at. You can see it on the tape. He can make all the money throws. He can fit it into tight windows. Superflex value is going to be there for him. He kept the pace going from North Carolina once Sam Howell left. And he's another guy who's just built upon that resume. He could be even rising even higher this time next year at the 105. We got a big-time tight end here. Everybody's been looking forward to him ever since he was a freshman. This dude has been an impact receiver at the tight end spot. We're talking about Brock Bowers from Georgia. We're talking about size-adjusted athleticism for days. An impact player. A guy we saw it off the rip as a freshman. Getting yards after the catch. He's got ball skills. You can toss it up to him and he can rise up 
might be the next Kyle Pitts type of player where it's just straight athleticism, straight up prowess coming out for the NFL draft, and you're just going to take this tight end at cost because you can't ignore the production and the athletic profile. At the 106, we got another damn good wide receiver who might be slept on when compared to his talent. We're talking about Mika Igbuka, wide receiver from Ohio State, the other wide receiver from there. And this guy is a yak monster. He's got speed. He can get you those yards after the catch. That's what I like about him. And coming out of high school, he is very polished. I like the. He's very assertive. He's very good with the ball in his hands. He can make tight, hot catches. This is a very explosive athlete. I'm a Ohio State fan. I've watched these guys play. I feel like there was no downgrade when they evolved from Garrett Wilson, Chris Olave, and company to these guys. These are some damn good wide receivers we're looking at. He was a former five-star recruit at that and has only delivered when he's been on the field. We got another Ohio State Buckeye coming off the board. And I don't think these guys were from Ohio, but they're all about them Buckeyes. This guy had a huge freshman season. Last year was nicked up with injuries. I'm talking about Travion Henderson, running back from Ohio State. He's got burst, speed, he's explosive. Catches the ball in the backfield. Going back to his freshman year, another highlight reel machine. Gets the ball in space, and he's gone. He'll make you look dirty in the open field because he's that damn explosive. If he has a good season next year, if he's healthy, you're going to see that again because he's a tremendous athlete. One of the top running backs coming out in his recruiting class. Top star recruit. Big time running back from Ohio State. At 108, we got another high-end recruit. Five-star quarterback that's living off that recruiting prowess but showed some things last year at Texas. That's Quinn Ewers. And you're not fading him yet because next year is another year for him to blossom. What's going to happen with him? You got Xavier Worthy there for him to go off with. Had some injuries last year and had to come back. Showed some grit. But again, five-star talent. He's very good throwing the ball. We covered him in some of those videos when he was coming out of high school. It's going to have that super flex value. Let's see if he can hold on to that through 2023. At the 109, we got another big banger running back, Braylon Allen. Running back from Wisconsin. Dude, 6'2", 238 pounds. Three down pounder, just 19 years old right now. When he comes out for the draft, he'll be 20 years old. A young running back. This guy's been productive ever since he was 17 years old. And he has been a highlight reel too. Big runs. Once he's in the open field, once he can pick up that speed, he's good to go. Not the fastest guy, but size adjusted speed matters for a 238-pound running back like this. And he's going to post some good numbers for his size. And he's fun to watch. And another Wisconsin running back that you're going to have to look at coming for drafts next year. Speaking about schools, bringing out productive players, we got another LSU wide receiver. You already know if you're in the know, but we're talking about Malik Nabbers at the 110 spot here. Posted solid numbers this year. Kayshawn Boutte was there. Kayshawn Boutte was coming back from the injury, but Nabbers stepped up. He was good the year prior, and we're looking for him to build upon that resume. Looks like another good wide receiver coming from the LSU program. At 111, we got a five-star running back. This guy coming out of high school was using the slot, running routes, highly developed, it's got good burst, played on a weird team here in college that used to be really, really, really good. Now they're really, really, really suspect. That's Will Shipley from Clemson. This guy will show you the goods, burst, speed, wiggle, can catch the ball the backfield. Clemson has been on the down as of lately, ever since Trevor Lawrence has left. But if you look at the tape, go back and watch him, and you'll see a damn good player from Will Shipley. We're going to finish this off at the 112 spot, and we got another explosive running back, another high-end recruit, Donovan Edwards, running back from Michigan. He's been hiding behind Blake Corum, but got his chance against Ohio State where he blew up. Now everybody's talking about him. But whenever he's got the opportunity to prove himself, he always shows up. He's explosive. He's got speed. If he catches the ball in the flat, if he gets the ball in space, he's as good as gone. He's a player you need to be excited about because he can really help an NFL team and really be productive at the next level. Looking at this draft class, I feel like there's 
plenty of meat on the bone to chew on. I feel like there's a good thirst trap here to get ready for next year. I don't think you need to pivot out of this year's class because it's good at running back. This year's class is also going to have some good running backs. The running backs are coming for that great running back reset we keep talking about. Wide receiver, a little bit better on the top end. We're going to have some depth as well. Quarterback is also going to be good in this year's class too. We're also good on the top end at tight end as well. Could add some depth. Let's see what happens in 2023. But I'm excited about this class. I'm excited about this year's class. You don't need to pivot back and forth between others. But maybe you want to diversify your assets a little bit. That's always a smart thing to do if you can catch value. And everything's according to value when it comes to Dynasty Fantasy Football. Let me know your comments below in the comment section. I want to hear about who you're trying to get in 2024. Who you're watching. Maybe they didn't get listed. Maybe they're more of a third round guy, second round guy, fourth round guy deep prospect i want to hear about it i want to hear about it i like hearing about these deep college prospects because that's my game that's where i'm comfortable at make sure you hit that subscribe button on the way out i'm only here to help you going forward building your dynasty teams maybe some debbie teams in season with lineups and everything else i want to thank you for watching catch you on the next video